Pathfinder is now going to share with us the kids chat. Good morning everybody. I remember when I was at school I used to always love it in social studies when we would learn about places like ancient Egypt and ancient Greece and ancient Rome. I don't know whether you still learn about places like that at school. I hope you do because it's really interesting to look at the ways that people used to live. And you know, it struck me this morning that actually Paul was there. Paul was in these places that I really liked to read about and to learn about. And we heard a little bit about his experiences in Athens in Greece in the reading this morning. An earlier verse, verse 16, says, While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. And I'm going to read also a little bit more that Heather had read. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this description to an unknown God. So it's a bit like Paul was a tourist. He was wandering around Athens. He was seeing what it was like and how it was different from other places that he'd been. Imagine all the things he saw, including what he was talking about here, lots and lots of statues of all the gods. So some of the gods that the Greeks worshiped were Demeter, she was the goddess of agriculture, Poseidon, the god of the sea, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, Athena, the goddess of war and wisdom, Apollo, the god of medicine, arts, light and music. And these statues, they would have been quite impressive, you know, they were built on a plinth, which was like a very solid, quite large foundation. And they would have been really obvious as you were walking around Athens. But were they really gods? Was there really a goddess of agriculture and a god of the sea? Well, no, they're not. Those are just things. There is the sea and there is agriculture. But there's no goddess of agriculture. You know, we're a bit the same sometimes. We put things on plinths and we make them the gods of our lives. Things like appearance. Sometimes the way that we look has become so important to us that it stresses us out if our hair's not right or if our clothes aren't the most up-to-date, fashionable clothes that you can buy. What about sport? Sometimes it stops being just a game and we follow our teams religiously. We have to go to every game. We have to watch every game. We have to buy all the merchandise or we have to go and play the game to the exclusion of everything else. Or being popular. Sometimes do you find that you have to do anything your friends want you to do in order to stay popular? Is it that important to you? Paul went on to explain about our God, about the real God to the people of Athens. He explained to them that he made the whole world and everything in it, that he is our Father, that he is revealed in Jesus Christ, and that he died and rose again. So who stands on the plinth of your life? Is it you? Are you the most important person in your life? Are you your own God? Or... The real God? Do you put Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit on the plinth and is he the God of your life? Well, there is a lot that tempts us in our world. Help us to not make them more important than you. Help us to keep you on that plinth of our lives. Amen.